at the wrinkles we expect out of the Iowa offense in 2022. LaShawn, a former running back, what's it like and what's the best running back for the Iowa Hawkeyes scheme? And Brian Ferentz, what's it like? He goes from offensive coordinator in a new title. Quarterback coach will ask LaShawn what it's like to play for Brian Ferentz. Our Locked On Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back once again to the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Trent Condon here. LaShawn Daniels there. LaShawn, it's Friday. We're getting ready for the weekend. And boy, those summer months, they are becoming, uh, weekends are becoming more and more precious. We got football right around the corner. Last night, kicked off Jacksonville and the Raiders. And I'll tell you, I watched a whole lot more of that football game than I anticipated. <laughs> now, of course, I bet on it because that's what I do. But also, <laughs> I just was so happy to see football again last night. Yeah, yeah. Anytime football is back on the TV, like, you know, like, all right, it's time, right? Regardless if it's preseason or not, right? I just love seeing football um, out there and uh, even watch one of our former Hawkeyes play for a little bit. Um, Makai did pretty mm -hmm. well yesterday. So, so yeah, anytime football is on the TV, it means we're getting around that time of the year, which is um, what I love. Uh, no doubt. And I'm right there with you. And we get a little bit of a respite now. Wait till next week when every team will get their chance to play three preseason games, the extra NFL game. But we're here to talk about Hawkeyes. And we talked about it a little bit with you uh, last week because these guys now are in camp. They've been into it now for a couple of days. You're kind of getting your feet underneath you just this time. What are you looking to do? You're, of course, you want to catch a coach's eye, right? You want to get your position coach. You want to get the coordinator, whatever it is. You're working to do that as you're going through the reps and, and it's got to be such a grind out there every single day. What's the mindset? What was the mindset for you as camp was going out? You knew you still had a lot of practice in front of you, but just trying to maybe get the eye of that coach. Yeah. Um, you know, especially like if you're a young guy or a guy who hasn't uh, played a lot of football, um, this early part of camp, um, especially like while we're just in shells and helmets, um, you really, you're really just trying to, get down a lot of fundamentals and really learn the playbook because right now the bulk of the install of most of the offense takes place pretty much early on in camp right um and then once you get past that point in time then you can start to kind of start playing faster and um doing doing the things that you know how to do best but early on in camp you want to show the coaches that hey um i can do a great job of obviously learning the playbook understanding my assignments um knowing what I do well, and then as well as going out there and executing and taking the corrections that are made in the film room and applying them out there on the football field, right? So there's not there's not going to be, there's not too much kind of going on right now. It's still like a lot of people, a lot of the guys just knocking a bunch of the rust off, um, getting their feet under them um, to prepare for themselves as the season goes along. Because again, fall camp, it's it's a long period of time, right? You still got about a month, uh, until the first football game. So there's still a lot of practices that are going to have to go through. Um, but at least early on in camp, you want to show the coaches like, hey, I'm coachable. Um, you know, I can learn um, things pretty quickly. I can grasp my assignments. So when I go out there, I know that they, the coaches have belief that they know that you know that what you're supposed to be doing out there. So. Well, today's episode brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online. Where the game starts, I mentioned I'm already uh, deep into it, betting on preseason football. And, you know, another bet that you could uh, possibly make out there is how much improvement are we going to see from this Iowa football offense this year? An offense that was much maligned a year ago. Yeah, the team won 10 games, the quarterback position. It goes hand in hand with it. But, LaShawn, I'll tell you, you're looking for some wrinkles. You know that this is not going to suddenly be an offense that's going to look a whole lot different, right? It's not going to be where suddenly we see – them out there chucking around 50 times a game or they're going to go away from the zone blocking scheme. The fundamentals are going to remain the same. Are there any wrinkles? Is there anything that you look at and you say, I want to see this just a little bit different, knowing it's not going to be a complete tweak. It's, it's not going to be anything wild that we're going to see this season. Some wrinkles maybe that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, it's a great question. Um, for starters, I think one of the easiest ways that Iowa in general can get can add some different wrinkles is really just 
kind of how plays are called in different situations when they're called, right? I think, for example, last year, um, I know a lot of times, like, guys like to see is, you know, open the open up the playbook a little bit and throw on first down, right? But I want to say, I don't remember who had posted it, and so someone's probably going to have to fact check me on this, but if there was a time where we threw the ball on first down and it was an incomplete pass, it was like 90% of the time like it was going to be a run play the next play, mm-hmm. right? So as a defense, if I if I know, like, if I, like we're scheming against Iowa and I know that, hey, if they, they go come out throwing and they don't complete that first play, like, is a pretty high probability that they're going to run the football the next play, right? And with this type of success, I guess, non-existent success that we had um, in the run game last year, right, you're already behind the chains, and then you have, you know, maybe a one-yard gain, or even if you go for a loss, now you're in third and long, and now the defense can practically do whatever they want um, because they know that Iowa offensive, passing offense just isn't isn't there where, where it needs to be, right? So – that's that. That's one area, right, where Coach Brian Ferentz can make some adjustments, right? Just kind of scheming against himself, right? Like if I'm okay, if I know that the defense is anticipating that I'm going to run the football on, you know, second down, why not just try to open it up? Why not try to, um, you know, push the ball downfield a little bit more on on second down, even if we are behind the change after first down, right? Um, that's one area. Um, another area is obviously just trying to get some of your skill guys in space some more. I know that that's things, those are things that they try to do a little bit. And depending upon how the game's going, right, a lot of times they can find themselves getting away from that and uh, try to fall back on old habits instead of trying to continue on with some of their game plan, game plan stuff, right? So I feel like those are, those are a couple areas where as a play caller, um, Coach Ryan Ferentz could definitely make some changes to probably help alleviate some pressure on the offense to allow guys to um, be in a position to be successful. So the defense isn't just predicting their every single move, right. As well as, you know, some of the checks and audibles that, mm-hmm. that happen. I know that we have a lot of our basic audibles. A lot of times it's oh, like, all right. hey. Yeah. We, we got to go here, LaShawn, because I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, I've been watching this, this offense, some iteration one way or the other now mm-hmm. for the last 24 years. And why does it feel like every single time they're checking something, it's just a run to the left? What, what is it? <laughs> it's, what, so help us out here because you get it, it's. I know it's not true, but boy, does it feel like it watching from the stands. Yeah, it's like hey, if they're bringing a blitz on some side, right? It's pretty much all right. Checking slant to mm-hmm. usually into the boundary, right? Yes. Um, Short side of the field. There we go. Every, yeah, everyone knows it. We see it every single Saturday. I mean, it, it's it's one of the bread and butters. I mean, heck, I mean. Out the slant plays and the inside zone plays. I mean, those are the first plays that we install, right? So I mean, it's 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 very easy to run. It's an easy check for a quarterback to make, right? And especially like if they're blitzing from you know the field side, you're kind of trying to run away from that. But when you know you're not when the when the blocks up front aren't clean and the running backs aren't making a definitive decision. On those plays right it makes it very difficult for you to have success in those plays but yeah i mean we all know it every team that we go against knows it i mean heck even when i played we even tried to change like how we called how we would call the audibles right and teams still kind of got a handle on it like hey <laughs> they're checking it this way they're running this way um so i think i think a part of it is though a little bit of a pride thing as well it's like hey this is what we do um we don't want to change it really for, for anyone. Yeah, we're going to make a few adjustments, but at the end of the day, this is our bread and butter, and we're going to run this um, because that's what we want, right? And that's what right. usually Coach Ferentz, uh wants, right? He wants to run the football. He wants to run, you know, his scheme. He wants to run the, the slant plays and really inflict some some pain on defenses doing that. So that's that, that's, that's a little bit like – yeah. <laughs> that's, why, that's why it feels that way. Um, but, you know, as a play caller – um, I feel like Brian does get some input on a bunch of things, mm-hmm. obviously, because obviously they are family, right? They've been coaching together for a while now. Um, so he does definitely get some additional input. And I think that we see it sometimes, but I feel like there's definitely times where we can build a little bit more off of that. 
Well, we're going to come back when we do. We're going to talk a little bit about a, another name that I think could help out this running game this season. Of course, Tyler Goodson, he's off to the NFL. He's working out right now with the Green Bay Packers as he gets his shot at the next level. A different kind of name. We'll talk about that. We'll also get LaShawn's thoughts. I'm playing for Brian Ferentz. We'll do that as we continue back here in a moment with more. It's the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. So I mentioned earlier, betonline.net, the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. I'm betting baseball every single day. I got a couple of golfers going this weekend. Both guys in the top five right now have them to win. So I'm going to be watching some golf this weekend. But we know most importantly, football is right around the corner and you want to get in with Bet Online. They continue to be the top online resource for all your wagering information live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered there. Head to Bet Online today. Use your mobile device to learn more on the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, so let's uh, roll through here. And we talked a little, a little bit, LaShawn, earlier about what we're going to see with this offense, some of the improvements that possibly could happen in the running game. So I want to go to Arlen Bruce. So I got to see Arlen play his senior season, Colin High School football here in Central Iowa and their run to the state championship. He transfers in, he's ineligible, then he's eligible. All I knew is as soon as I saw that dude, I said, I don't care where he is, that dude is a playmaker. He makes a play to beat Dowling in the semifinals defensively. Hadn't played defense all year. They put him back there. He has an interception that helps win that football game. He just makes plays. Is he going to be a guy that catches 60, 70 balls in a season? I don't think so, but they're just something. Those guys that they have that wiggle, you know, they they have that dynamic personality. We saw that a year ago at times where they got him involved. How easy is that to unlock in the Iowa offense? A guy with the jet sweeps, the end arounds, getting them involved different ways, and a guy with the talents like an Arlen Bruce. Yeah. Um, first off, when you have a guy, a skill guy like that, that can – just create plays with the ball in their hands, right? You want to do whatever you can, right? Scheme wise to help um, emphasize that, right? There was a bunch of times I was last year. Um, they found several different ways to get him the football, um, whether it was in the passing game, um, it was in the run game, short pass game, wherever, right? They just want to finally get the, get the ball in his hands. And I feel like as a play caller, right? That's where you got to let your kind of creativity kind of go to work, right? You obviously have, a lot of your base stuff, your fundamentals, things that you do all the time. But as we've kind of mentioned throughout the show, right, there's different wrinkles and things that offense can do uh, that can, again, alleviate some pressure on offense and put the defense on their heels. And having a guy like Arlen Bruce um, allows for that type of versatility. So I'm anxious to see kind of how they how they build on that um, some more, because obviously we've seen guys like that um, throughout college football for for several different teams, right, where they have that that kind of guy where they're, they're listed as a receiver, but really they're kind of just an athlete on the offensive side of the football where they can virtually do everything on the field. And that's really got to let, how you let your creativity go because that's going to help open up a lot of different things, right, when you have a guy like that that can create big plays with the ball in his hand. Um, it makes it that much easier on the rest of the offense, right, because, again, as I mentioned, the defense does have to play on their heels. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. We uh, we talked a lot about, obviously, the running game, and it makes sense with your background. What kind of running back do you think works best in Iowa's system? I mean, a, a guy mm -hmm. like you, more of that power kind of running back, a speedster. I'm just so intrigued because – you got both Williamses coming back, both Gavin and LaShawn. Both those guys run hard. They got some size to them. Hilson's also on the roster. He was banged up last year. And then they bring in two freshmen this year. Caleb Johnson, the dude looks like Hulk already. I mean, he is put together. He's an Ohio guy. You, you know that he's going to be ready to go. I, I'm just intrigued by a guy like Jay Z on Patterson because they haven't had that, that quick, shifty, kind of quick twitch kind of guy at the running back spot in a while. Can a guy like that work? 20, 25 carries a game. If it turns out that he is a player that is ready to go, not at this point, but down the line, is Iowa's offense conducive to having that smaller running back be able to be, I guess, your, your every down back, if you will? So it's interesting. I would say that, yes. I mean, a smaller back definitely does have the ability, but you kind of have to be careful just because of the frame that they're given, right? The frame that they have, right, just naturally giving having them – you know, run the football 20, 25 times a game, 
isn't really the smartest thing to do, right? Because you obviously want to you want to keep those guys healthy. But mm-hmm. I do think a small running back can have plenty of success in the offense, right? Because especially especially in a zone blocking scheme, you watch, um, you know, football on Sundays, right? And you watch the Packers and Aaron Jones, right? A fantastic uh, zone zone running back, right? Does an excellent job of being patient, taking his time and reading the hole, and then when he uh, wants to hit that hole, right? He's very definitive on it. And another thing that Aaron Jones has is obviously fantastic lateral speed um, and quickness to make the right jump cuts, right? If the hole is closed, he can bounce it in, bounce it out, right? And make a place um, wherever he can, right? So I feel like a back like that is definitely the back that you're really looking for in a zone type scheme um, that Iowa runs. But now you know that Iowa also have has a bunch of their power plays, Right. You know, you know, third and short, you know, power is typically going to be the play that's going to be coming. Right. So you want to have in that situation, you definitely want to have a back that is a little bit bigger, um, that has that straight ahead speed, but also is going to have some pretty good size to be able to want to fall forward. But in the grand scheme of things, when you're looking at Iowa's offense and you're looking at, you know, the ideal running back for the offense that can essentially play all, all the downs. Right. You're, you're going to want a guy that's going to have great patience um excellent vision and excellent lateral quickness to have succeed to succeed in the run game and then in the pass game right you want to have a guy that can obviously pick up um blitzers and pass protection and catch the football out of the backfield so it's 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 gonna be interesting this year with the amount of backs that we have i feel like there's a bunch of guys that are there that have the ability to create plays and i'm even more intrigued to see both of the both of the williams um, to go out there and see what they actually can do. Um, because obviously we only really got a small taste of them um, last year in the bowl game. So it'll be interesting um, to see how those, the, uh, those guys develop and as well as um, the, the younger guys um, behind them. Good stuff there. I, I just go back to 2015 with you and Jordan Canzeri, kind of two different type of backs back there, how successful both you guys were. Akron was out there get, getting the football mm-hmm. at times too. It just – those different dynamics and different kind of running backs, I think works really well. And it's great to get your perspective on that. All right, LaShawn, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about playing for Brian Ferentz. A lot of pressure on him. You can hear from the interviews this summer. Chad Lysico recently uh, here with the Des Moines Register. Scott Dockerman about a month ago, back in June, he talked to Tom Kakert of Hawkeye Report. He knows the pressure. What's it like to play for Brian Ferentz? We'll talk about that when we come back. More on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. All right, one final thing with you, LaShawn, and that is the new quarterback coach, Brian Ferris. Now, when you played for Brian, did you ever think that was going to be one of his titles? <laughs> Offensive coordinator, yeah, you can see that. Quarterback coach, Brian Ferris. Uh Yeah, quarterback coach is definitely something I didn't see. And then especially, like, being around him, um, enough like all four of my years like i've never never guessed that he is going to be a quarterback coach but i mean here we are here we are he is obviously a guy that knows the game i mean you don't get to that level regardless of of what your name is if you don't know the game of football and you don't work for bill belichick's staff like he has The, the guy knows football how much do you think he is hamstrung though by his dad you know we talk about nepotism and the negative side of it just because of his last name. Well, he only has the job because his dad is the coach. We can argue the merits of that, but also you get mad at your boss. I think we've all been there, right? Where you've been upset with your boss, but when your boss is your dad, how difficult is that to tell the old man, not only who is your boss, but also your father, hey, you're wrong here. I'm right. We need to do this. That's got to be a difficult dynamic and, and one I just don't think is talked about as much. Yeah, it's it's definitely definitely tricky, for sure. It's definitely tricky, um, because again, I'm not in those like I'm not in the I'm not in the building now, and I definitely was not in the coaches' rooms, right, with the having their coaches' meetings and things like that. So, who knows the type of discussions that that goes into those things? But obviously, we know when you look at Iowa's basically offense, right, and, and Coach Ferentz's tenure that they've all very pretty much for for the most part have looked pretty similar to each other right Mm -hmm. so we obviously know that um coach kirk parents has what he wants his offense to look like right and and we totally get that right he's he's a head man right he honestly has a say in 
um, you know, kind of all the final decisions, right? But when your offensive coordinator is your son, right, and Coach Brian Ferentz, uh, you know that he's obviously going to – he's going to have a lot of very similar feelings, right, as the head man does, right? I mean, it's just it's just natural, right? Our family, you're going to typically have um, a lot of the same ideas and things like that. But I'm sure that a big part of it um, – I'm sure there's plenty of things that Coach Brian wants to do that he wants to expand upon um, where, you know, kind of Coach Ferentz is probably like, well, maybe not quite yet. Um, I'm pretty more confident about this, yada, yada, yada. So I'm sure that there is a bunch of discussion that's kind of going on between those two about what things um, he wants to do with the offense and how he wants it to look. Um, but obviously we all know that Coach Brian Ferentz is under a lot of pressure this year. That's the, in general, the offense is, right? Because mm -hmm. we, 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 we know that the downfalls <laughs> that they had uh, on the offensive side of football last year, right? I mean, again, uh, what, what was it? The last, like, four games of the season, they only threw like three passing touchdowns or something like that. And two of them last came six against, games. Yeah. Last six games. And two of them yeah. came against Minnesota. Right. Mm -hmm. So like yep. <laughs> as an offensive coordinator, right. That's, that's definitely not something you want to have on your resume. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and obviously we, I'm sure coach Brian has um, bigger aspirations, right. To possibly, you know, become a head coach, right. Expand on his, um, you know, coaching career and, so he knows that, hey, our offense has to be better, right? And it's going to obviously start at top, start up top with him. Um, but also it's going to be a part of, hey, having those discussions with his, with his dad. Like, hey, um, we were having a lot of struggles last year, right, um, in areas X, Y, and Z. And I feel like X, Y, and Z are the ways that we can, can alleviate that, right? And obviously we, we've heard them talk that they've added all these different things in the offseason and here and that. Um, so as that starts to develop throughout camp and what that begins to look like and what it looks like, you know, week one, we'll, we'll know how much, uh, you know, work and obviously there's plenty of work that went into it, but we'll actually know how much influence actually went into that and what type of changes are being made because yeah, I mean, there's plenty of pressure on offense. We want to have some success. We're going to have to pass the football if we want to be able to get to the, to the, uh, goals that we have uh, for the football season. So. It's uh, it's going to be a fun one. One final thing. What's it like to play for him? So listening to him talk, uh, knowing some people, a couple of my buddies that are a little younger than me. I'm 42. He's 39. But some of your younger buddies that lived on the same floor as him in the dorm I had some things to say. He's got a personality. <laughs> he, he likes to swear. I mean, he's He can be difficult to get along with, I, I have heard. What about you as a player, your perspective playing for Brian and, and playing for a guy, boy, he is cut from a different cloth than his old man, it feels like. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely a lot more fiery, for sure, than than Coach Kirk Ferentz, for sure. Um, but don't get me wrong. Kirk will definitely – he if there there's times where he will definitely get riled up, for sure. But Brian definitely takes that to another level. And, I mean, back then, I mean, when I was in school, he was coaching alignment. So, you know, mm -hmm. alignment coaches are always already juiced up to begin with. So – yeah, he was definitely a fiery guy, fiery personality. Um, but obviously, he he just loves football, right? And he loves mm -hmm. he loves Iowa so much that uh, that passion definitely comes out quite a bit. Um, quite definitely, it came out a lot when he was offensive line coach. Um, obviously, he's coached several different positions since then, right? He's coached running backs, tight ends, and the OC. Now he's coaching quarterbacks. Uh, so who knows how how that has developed? Maybe he's yeah. kind of became a little bit more mellow. I mean, I would guess you kind of have to if you're going to be coaching um, quarterbacks. You kind of have to be a little bit more chill. You just can't be that kind of crazy rah rah guy. It doesn't really make sense as a quarterback coach. But yeah, back when I was in school, he was definitely a fiery guy. Um, has a lot of passion for the game. Loves Iowa. Um, so there are times where it's like, yeah, like yeah, like we kind of need that. And there's other also times where you're like, okay. <laughs> that's a little much. Like, I think we got this. Um, but yeah, that, that that's kind of the idea. So your so your buddies are definitely spot on when it comes to Brian Ferentz. At least it was when I when I was in school. Who knows? Sure. He's probably a lot more chill chill now. Well, I don't know a lot more. I mean, that, that's a <laughs> that'd be relative one. I don't think I don't think you're gonna shake that out of him. It's just it's his personality, right? And, and mm -hmm. it's difficult for that to transform, and it can evolve, and it can get different. And age has something to do with that. As you get 
older and more mature. I'm sure that's a part, but yeah, it's it's going to be a big season. And just listening and reading through these transcripts and a lot of things he, let's say things go south this year. You know, mm-hmm. things go poorly in Iowa. The offense does not make improvements and they stumble through a season and they finish six and six. And it's a big disappointment this year. Reading through, and again, this is reading through the lines. This is all conjecture, but I think Brian would step away. If it went that poorly again, I think he knows he doesn't want to put his dad in that situation where he has to to fire him. I think if it goes poorly this year, Brian, he has enough understanding of what's happening and, and the conversation surrounding him that he would resign, that he would step away, and, and he would get another job in football. It's not like he would right. be done. But I just don't think he'd want to put his dad through that. At least that's the way that I read it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely something that you're going to have to consider, right? If, mm-hmm. if offense doesn't go that way, right, what what does he do, right? I mean, obviously we know that the Iowa football program, it's really a, it's really a family business, right? We know that a lot of the people that are on the staff or that come back are people that went to Iowa that are part of the program at some point in time. Right. It's it's kind of like it's kind of that family business. So and and you're definitely right. I mean, I know that if, if my dad was, you know, coaching and I was working for him and, uh, you know, my offense wasn't doing great. Right. I wouldn't want to be in the position where he has to fire me out. Right. Mm-hmm. And different things. So, yeah, who, who knows? I mean, I definitely think Brian can be a fantastic offensive line coach. I see he's done a great job with tight ends as well. Um, pretty much pretty much anywhere. Right. Whether it's in college or NFL, I think you do a great job. Um, obviously this year, if he wants to continue being an offense coordinator, right, this is going to be, honestly, it's going to be a huge year for, for him. And you know, I mean, we've already talked about it. Um, we're probably going to continue to talk about it, but because I mean, it, it's really that just that important, but I could see that being a situation where that is something that he does possibly do, but you know, we hope that it doesn't come to that, right? We hope that, Hey, mm-hmm. they make that four one eighty uh, turnaround, right. And the offense just lights it up, right relatively for Iowa football. They light it up Iowa football style. But um <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll definitely see see how that plays out. Um but obviously we wish we wish everyone the best and we hope that it doesn't come to come to that point. Well we are 29 days away from kickoff in Kinnick Stadium. 22 days away from the kickoff of the Big Ten slate over in Ireland with Nebraska as they match up against Northwestern over there. You can know what your team is up against across the Big Ten with Locked On Big Ten Everyday host Nate Dickinson and local experts from Locked On take you across the Big Ten in 30 minutes. Make Locked On Big Ten your second listen. That's Locked On Big Ten. Weekend in front of you, LaShawn, any big plans? What's going on with you? Are you doing something fun Uh. in Chicago? No, actually, no. We're I'm chilling for the most mm-hmm. part this weekend. Um, my high schoolers start their their fall camp yeah. starts this upcoming week, um, so that's exciting. So before that, I think I'm just gonna kind of chill out for the weekend and uh, relax for a little bit before football season really gets gets rolling here. I'm right there with you. Yeah, this is kind of low key. Of course, I was on vacation last week and. Early, uh, late next week, I'll be going to Vegas for work. Yeah, I'll be working out there. <laughs> doing my radio show out there and actually working out a couple of football contests with our, our partners from Circus Sports and a brand new sports book there, the biggest in the world. So I'll be out there. In fact, maybe we'll try to do a show uh, Friday if your schedule allows. We'll try to do it. I'll do it from the biggest sports book in the world, and you can do it from your uh, co- confines there in Chicago. Yeah, for sure. That sounds good. All right. Well, we got a big weekend in front of us. We'll come back next week and we will be on our daily schedule as we continue to roll through. He's LaShawn Daniels. I'm Trent Condon. This has been the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast.